Chris. Okay, yeah. so uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Councillor Jeremy Pert, and I'm the Cabinet Member for Communities and Health at Stafford Borough Council, and also the Deputy Leader. First of all, thank you for joining this afternoon's webinar, which is the sixth out of our series of six, uh, and thank you for giving up your time to do so. So uh, this a series of webinars is really about trying to help people to have those knowledgeable conversations um, so that people can feel at ease to signpost people to the right support that is available within our beautiful borough and to make sure that they're able to feel confident in having those valuable conversations with sufficient knowledge uh, and understanding without trying to turn people into experts. So this series of six, we've covered a whole variety of things from looking at energy efficiency with our friends and colleagues at Beat the Cold. We've also uh, had uh, the fire service talking about some of the works that they do across a whole range of areas, including uh, with, um, with, um, with the Falls Prevention Service. Uh, we've also uh, spoken to housing options um, and we've had conversations with housing standards to look at mould and damp very specifically. Um, and we've also talked to uh, the Staying Well service run by uh, Midlands Partnership Foundation. Fund. And this, and I wish I had a drum roll, this last uh, webinar um, is being led by our friends and partners over at Citizens Advice. Um, and we'll focus specifically on debt uh, and other frequently raised issues. But it will also pick up um, the fabulous support that people can get uh, from a Citizens Advice uh, within our borough. Uh, so. Um, the things that I should be probably saying is, first of all, um, the webinars um, uh, could only be put on with uh, the support of our knowledgeable partners. Um, but more importantly, the warm spaces could only uh, work through uh, all of our partners working together across a whole variety of different uh, streams of activity. They include, obviously, the warm spaces themselves and the volunteers. They also include uh, Midlands Partnership Foundation Trust, uh, who have been very helpful uh, in pulling together much of the work uh, that has gone on in the warm spaces from a from a from a structural point of view. Um, and also uh, our partners over at the Community Foundation for Staffordshire. Uh, I've often said on these webinars that uh, the whole um, warm space network, uh, when we first conceived the idea last year, when I think we could all see uh, and recognise there was an impending problem coming with a cost of living crisis. Um, but when we, when the partners came together, we all recognised that we couldn't individually put uh, up this sort of network uh, without everyone else being involved, including our brilliant volunteers and the warm spaces themselves. So really thank you to everyone for all the work that they've done uh, and uh, for supporting people in uh, our communities. The format of this afternoon is really simple. Um, I'm going to hand over, you'll be pleased to know, to uh, Citizen Advice. They're going to talk very specifically uh, about uh, debt and some of the other things that uh, people come to see them for impartial, confidential advice with. Uh, and they're also going to talk about some of the things that they've been involved with um, and give some live examples and um, and some top tips. Uh, so um, I think the real main message, and it's one we've used a couple of times, is there is no reason why anyone uh, with uh, any concern should, should suffer in silence. And um, please reach out to the relevant uh, partners uh, around the table so that you can get the support uh, that uh, you need during what is a very difficult period. So after they finish their slot, um, we'll then move into a brief question and answer um, period. We'll take questions uh, from uh, the chat um, and, and we'll, we'll use potentially up to 15 minutes uh, to, to do those. Um, and I would also encourage our partners around the table um, in the warm spaces to uh, think about any other subject areas they feel that would be beneficial for us to just uh, shine a very brief um, a sort of summary spotlight on. Uh, because obviously in these sort of webinars, we can't help make people experts. You know, there are people around the table who've got um, 20 or 30 years experience uh, in these very specific areas. And, and, and in 35, 40 minutes, we can't get people to, to that level, but we can certainly provide um, you know, a, a good understanding of the background and overview as to, to some of the uh, issues, some of the uh, concerns and some of the things that uh, we all can do to help uh, support people during this difficult period.
So I would encourage if there are other topics that people want to uh, see, um, they just drop us a line and we will endeavour, um, if they're within our gift, obviously, uh, to put on some further webinars. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to say uh, settle back, uh, grab your notepads and pens, and let me hand over to uh, uh, our brilliant colleagues. Uh, and I've not introduced them very rudely, um, Tracy Argent um, and uh, Laura Dixon from um, from uh, Citizens Advice. So, Tracy, do you want to start off by introducing yourself um, and, uh, and 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 sort of some of your experience, and then you know, sort of, we'll we'll put up the slide deck that uh, that you brought from there. Okay. Yes, that's fine. So good afternoon and welcome. So I'm Tracy Argent and I work for Citizens Advice as an external contracts and partnership manager. My background with Citizens Advice is I've worked for Citizens Advice for the last four years, primarily on benefits, so universal credit. Uh, we've worked on the help to claim service, but in the last six months I've moved on to the energy team but also have a hand in on Staffordshire Victim Gateway and Pension Wise, whilst also working with Help to Claim on that team there. Okay. So it's been quite a variety of things and quite a variety of roles, and there's been quite a lot that I've seen on there. Laura, do you want to give some background on what you do at Citizens Advice? Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I'm Laura. Um, I've been with Citizens Advice about two years now. I did start primarily being a general advisor, um, so working with clients. And then I've now moved into the training role, so I support the volunteers and their ongoing training and still do some work with clients as well. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. So we hope that you're going to find this session informative and we are going to look at some of the services and support that Citizen Advice offers to our clients. The slides will be forwarded to you afterwards for your information and resources. Next slide, please. So who are we? So we're Citizens Advice. Citizens Advice Service provides free, independent, confidential and impartial advice to everyone on their rights and responsibilities. That's why we're here, to give people the knowledge and the confidence they need to find their way forward, whoever they are and whatever their problem. We campaign on big issues when their voices need to be heard. We value diversity, champion equality and challenge discrimination and harassment. And we're here for everyone. No one else sees so many people with so many different types of problems and that gives us a unique insight into the challenges people are facing today. We're assisted by volunteers, as mentioned, and the time and support we receive from the individuals is fundamental to our operation. I think at the moment we've got about 30 volunteers that we have and 40 paid staff to give some idea there. Um, prior to the lockdown, I think we were, we were running it more, far more on the volunteer side. And we're exceedingly grateful for every contribution that we receive. Our volunteers have a variety of life experiences and our promotion of equality and diversity means we encourage individuals who might not otherwise volunteer. Have the next slide, please. Thank you. So you'll see on your screen a few figures coming up and this is the type of work that we've been dealing with. So figures from the DEP team have reported a 186% increase in energy debts presented from December 2021 to November 2022 within our area. Our general and energy teams are seeing increases in cost of living issues from this time last year. So some examples of that. So practical energy up by 71%, pension credit up by 175%. Rent arrears with local authority, up by 167%. And localised social welfare is up by a massive 567%. And these are just some of the issues that we're seeing. So households are taking extreme measures to cope with rising costs. We found that just about managing households 
are cutting back on non-essential spending like socialising, buying clothes or driving. Low income households had already made these cutbacks and now some of them are reducing their vital activities such as washing or cooking food. By contrast with low income energy consumers, the group who were previously just about managing and have almost never had to rely on charitable support before are now seeking our help. Many have said that other people deserve support more than they do and that they shouldn't have to seek help given when they're in work. Melissa stated, there's people a lot worse off than me that would benefit from things like food banks. Needing to reach out for help makes you feel like you're failing. This would be the first time I've done it. So what we're really worried about is a ticking debt time bomb. The people are increasingly falling behind further on bills and cutting back on bare essentials to try and get by. So some of the outcome areas that we have provided clients assistance with are requesting to be added to the priority services register, obtaining fuel bank vouchers. We're doing lots of fuel bank vouchers and food vouchers at the moment. Applying to a government scheme for financial help and energy efficiency measures and also gaining goods or services from charities by applying on our clients' behalf. Next slide, please. So really looking at some of the debts. So what is debt? So the definition of debt is something, especially money, that is owed to somebody else. So you can have good debts and you can have bad debts. So a good debt is one that is a sensible investment in your financial future. It should leave you better off in the long term and should not have a negative impact on your overall financial position. Examples of this are things such as student loans, mortgages, business startup loans. On the other hand, bad debts are those that drain your wealth. They're not affordable and offer no real prospect of paying for themselves in the future. So when you're looking at things with bad debts, it's things such as high interest credit cards, store cards and doorstep lenders. Equifax says that a good debt can involve taking out a loan with careful planning and budgeting to ensure that you'll be able to afford the repayments. Before taking out a loan, creating a practical payment plan based on your income and outgoings can keep you on top of your repayments. If you stay within your credit limit and pay back your debt on time every month, this can positively affect your credit rating. The better your credit report is, the more likely you are to successfully apply for credit in the future. However, taking out a loan or credit agreement without first ensuring you can pay it off can result in missing or late payments. Unpaid or continuously late repayments may be noted on your credit report and that might be considered as a bad debt. Thank you. Next slide, please. So let's just have a look at some of those priority and non-priority debts. So examples of this. On your priority debts, they are ones that can cause you particularly serious problems if you don't do anything about them. If these debts are left unaddressed, there's a risk that you could lose your home, be cut off from essential supplies like gas or electricity, have essential possessions taken away, or even go to prison. So some of those priority debts are things such as mortgage, rent, secured loan arrears, council tax arrears, court fines, um, and child support maintenance and TV license. On the other hand, the non-priority debts are generally less serious the creditor can sue you for the money and get a county court judgment or repossess a non-essential item in the county court. Your credit rating may be affected if you miss these payments. Some non-priority debts could be considered as priorities depending on your circumstances or the creditor's action. And some of those are things such as credit cards and overdrafts, benefit overpayments, water rates arrears. Thank you. Next slide, please. 
So what can you do and what things can you use? So there are a few tools to help you make the most of your money. And there's a, an example there on the Citizens Advice website. Many people will have been impacted financially by increasing costs due to high energy bills, increases in mortgage rates, rental costs and the rise in inflation. Large numbers of these people may never have been in this situation before and they are struggling with the cost of living increases. There are a number of ways that we can help our clients to make the most of their money. One of these ways is by helping our clients to create a budget to help them understand where their money is being spent and what is affordable. We can help them to understand ways that they can make their money go further. Some people have never ever looked at their budget in this way before and may never have had to need to monitor how much they're spending on their bills and other expenses. They have previously been comfortable enough not to do this. So this may be a new exercise for them that we can assist with. Another way of trying to make the most of your money is by reviewing your expenditure on your energy costs. At Citizens Advice, we have a dedicated energy project and within this scheme, we can assist vulnerable clients to see if they're able to switch to a cheaper energy provider. We also provide advice measures that they can take to reduce their energy consumption and save money. We also at the moment have some funding to help with um, carbon monoxide monitors and things like that, that we can refer into. We can also help to inform clients of the social tariffs that they may be entitled to, to help reduce their expenditure on bills and assist them with application where necessary. And then a couple of those that spring to mind are obviously the big difference scheme and the assured tariff from South Staffordshire Water. Thank you. So everything that's on every, everybody's lips at the moment is energy. Um, so obviously there's quite a few shocking statistics in the energy at the moment. The Office for National Statistics states that electricity prices in the UK rose by 65.4% and gas prices by 128.9% in the year to November 2022. And whilst we welcome the support in the recent fiscal statement, particularly uprating benefits in line with inflation, the continuation of the energy price guarantee and targeted cost of living payments, it's not hard to see that this support will be swallowed by rising costs. People are already making steps to help reduce costs. Uh, just for example, the national website on make sure your home is energy efficient has been viewed more than twice as often as for the total of 2021, as people are seeking to reduce their energy bills. However, however higher energy bills alongside increased food, transport and other essential costs, coupled with lower cost of living payments, will create a financial cliff edge for millions of households come this April. Households who've previously been managing are now struggling. The new group of low to middle income people had less than a month's income saved, but they've got one person in work and a household income of between 21,000 and 30,000 pounds. They don't usually think of themselves as economically vulnerable, but it's immediately clear that this cost of living crisis is starting to align their experiences with the worse off energy consumers we've been looking at throughout. We hear comments all the time, such as my rent's gone up, lots of bills have gone up, but my pay isn't going up. There is a number there if you do want some support or you want to give people telephone number, there is a telephone number there for our advice team on energy. Next slide, please. Okay, so we're moving now on to, we're trying to get quite a good feel for the things that we are dealing with at Citizens Advice. And one of those, I did mention my background is benefits and universal credit. So during 21 to 22, we assisted 3,349 clients with benefit issues. The top issues presented were 
universal credit initial claim and personal independence payment. So in universal credit around 21% and 17% on personal independence payment. We supported clients to gain additional income of 2.46 million in new benefits awards and awards following appeals. And we've been able to achieve some amazing results for our clients with some substantial awards of benefits, which would not have happened without the input of our staff and our volunteers. We support our clients by completing full benefit checks to look at their entitlements, and we also help them to complete their application forms. We help and advise clients if they are successful in their claims and assist them with the reconsideration and appeals process. We are supporting clients to maximise their income to enable them to meet their outgoings. We also have a dedicated help to claim team to make claims for new, uh, brand new claims for universal credit. Universal credit is a benefit that you can claim if you're on a low income or unemployed. And it might be worth claiming universal credit if any of the following apply. So you could be struggling to pay your bills. You may have lost your job and have no income. Your income might have dropped. You may have had your hours reduced. You're still working, but your income has dropped. You may have a disability or illness that stops you working. We, we hear all the time about expensive childcare costs and universal credit will cover a portion of childcare costs if you're eligible and also if you're caring for somebody. There's no set level of income where you stop being eligible for universal credit. It all depends on your situation and that was why we would do a benefit calculation for you. Thank you. And just moving on now, something that we are seeing as well. We've seen an increase in scams. Some of these are very sophisticated and can be easy to fall for. There are some simple steps you can do to protect yourself from scams. So don't be rushed into making any quick decisions. It's fine to take your time. Never give money or personal details like passwords or bank details to anyone you don't know, trust or have only met online. If someone is pressuring you for this, it's more than likely a scam. Before you buy anything, check the company or website that you're using. You can read reviews from different websites or search for company details on Companies House and also take a look at their terms and conditions. Try to pay by debit or credit card because this gives you extra protection if things go wrong. Make sure your antivirus software is up to date and keep your online accounts secure. Make sure that you're using a strong password for email accounts, but don't use it anywhere else. Some people tend to use the same passwords for everything, but make sure that you're keeping those passwords separately. And just be suspicious. Scammers can be very, very smart. They can appear like a trusted business or a government official, have a professional website, say all the right things. Take your time to work out if this is a real organisation. Ask them for ID or contact the organisation on a number that you know and trust. Um, some, there's been a lot of scams recently that people have been receiving text messages that are claiming to be from somebody's mum. So I've heard that recently and it's like, I'm, you know, it's your daughter. Can you send me some money? So it's just things like that. And I know a few people who of my friends that have actually fallen for that. So really be aware. If you have been scammed or you feel that you may be scammed, just talk to others, share your experiences. Sharing knowledge with family and friends will hopefully put a stop to scams. OK, next slide, please. So finally, some of our other services. Um, so it's just really to make you aware about pension wise, because I know that not many people understand that citizens advice delivers pension wise. So we are one of 38 citizens advice local offices who have been delivering the government's pension wise scheme since 2015. It provides free impartial guidance service to support clients aged 50 and over with a defined 
contribution pension. Pension is now also part of Money Helper, and there's another telephone number there for you if you know, know anybody or if anybody comes to you that wants some support with that. Okay, thank you. So how do you get in touch with us? So we've put a number of useful links here for you. The local advice line will get straight through to our teams at Citizens Advice, Staffordshire Southwest. We are only a small team, so there is a demand, as you can see, on this service. There is a national website and there's a wealth of information on there for people who are able to self-help. There is a local self-referral tool for clients on our website, but that is for non-urgent um, issues because we've been getting possibly 20, 20 referrals through a day just through that form alone without the telephone lines. And I have put there as well the universal credit direct referral tool for you that you can link through to if you've got a client that wants support, wants a benefit calculation doing, some of the clients may want to know if they're going to be better off on legacy benefits or universal credit. If you've got a, a Stafford Borough Council or um, email, then you can refer through to us directly or you can contact me and we can discuss partnership arrangements for you. And lastly, from me now, just moving on to our outreaches. So we have started opening up our outreaches for drop-in services again. So Stafford at Eastgate Street, the general drop-in is open on Thursdays from 10 till 12 and 1 till 2.30. Um, we opened that one back up around about the 2nd of February, so it is very recent. Cannock, we have a general drop-in that's open on Mondays 10 till 2. That's at the Civic Centre at Cannock. We also have an outreach at Pie Green Community Centre in Hensford. That's got a general drop in on Wednesdays, 9.30 till 12.30. Rugely, we are over at the Community Church and Centre, which is just on the main road by the bus station. There's a general advice drop in there now on Tuesdays, 10 till 12. And at Codsall, we're at South Staffordshire District Council offices and we now have a general advice drop in on Thursdays, nine till three. Okay. Thank you. Gracie, thank you for that. And uh, thank you, Laura, for, for your help with that. Um, really interesting sort of the, the, the sort of volume of things that you get involved with, um, yeah. and equally the number of people that you saw throughout our yes. borough uh, last year so thank you for the work that you do uh, i've got a couple of questions um I, I was really surprised at the number of volunteers that you'd got uh, 30 mm -hmm. volunteers so i mean given some of our uh, uh, other people who, who are watching this um are volunteers themselves elsewhere if they wanted to consider being a volunteer with you in addition to what they're already doing uh, how would you uh, how would uh, how would they get to get to find out more how would they um how would they progress that discussion? I'll hand you over to Laura as our training and development. <laughs> That'd be great as well. We're always welcome. We really want extra staff, as you can see. We're getting so busy what Tracy's, uh, Tracy's explained. Um, they can, it is on, our, on the Citizens Advice website, our local website. There's an application pack and information um, regarding volunteering there. Or I'm happy to give my email and they can contact me and I can forward that as well. Um, but they can find that online um, and apply there. And then we do a sort of informal interview and chat and just explain about the training and what's involved. And um, yeah, but no, that would be great. And we do look for people to do it face to face and also on advice lines. So if they can't make it into the office, um, as well, that can be set up to deal with clients over the phone. Brilliant, thank you. And uh, would they be generalists or specialists, or can they be a mixture of both? Yeah, primarily, it's we have we have the general volunteers, and then we start to find what those volunteers are interested in, or what their specialist may be, um, what they've got more experience in, and then when they go on to full advice, um, we can then try and tailor and book appointments with those people um to give advice in a specific area 
Okay, thank you for that. And I, I just sort of think back, you know, some people have a mental block with numbers and maths. And, you know, I know some people say to me that, you know, they've not done any maths since they were at school. Um, and it, it's 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 always a bit of a sort of frightening area for some people aren't maybe numerically uh, um, um, good at good at good at numbers. Um, so is the budgeting advice that uh, is both the online tool and with uh, with yourself, Tracy? Is that is that sort of is that frightening stuff? And or, or is it or do you hold people's hands uh, no matter where they start with you? Well, we do actually have a dedicated debt team that help people all of the time with their budgeting and skills. So they can be referred in through that. And then there is the budgeting advice for those that are more able to control their own finances online. OK, so I think what you're saying is you take people from where they, they start from and give them the most appropriate advice, which is really good to, 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 yeah. to hear. Thank you. Yeah. When, when some I, when, people obvious, sorry, some people, um, we see some people that we need to support heavily and other people, you can give them a list of tasks to do and they're able to go away and do it. So we, it's it's not that one size fits all. Every person is unique and needs a different amount of support. I understand that and that's really helpful. Thank you uh, for, for that confirmation. And, and obviously it's all confidential. Yes, it is. It's a confidential service. Thank you. And, um, well, well, you know, year, you know, a long way back, um, we didn't really have visibility of credit uh, rating agencies and those sorts of things. How important is that these days? Um, I think that, you know, when you are applying for various things, they will check a credit rating agency just to see that there's various different ones, such as Experian, that they will do a credit check on. I think when you're looking for mortgages and things like that, obviously they will do credit checks and ratings on that. So it is worth understanding uh, as an individual, you know, your, the credit rating, how it works, if only to build up a good history of, of credit. Yes, it is. It is. Thank you. And um, just moving into your carbon monoxide um, monitors. Um, it, interesting because I, I mean I, I I think I understand that actually you should have them in quite a lot of rooms and um, you know that might be true in the private rented sector and in the uh, and with uh, social housing but I would guess many homeowners probably haven't thought of um, uh, of carbon monoxide um, detectors or monitors. Um, do, do you want to just sort of elaborate a bit more about what they're there for and what they're, they're designed to help people with? Okay, well the CO monitors, they actually detect carbon monoxide in, in, the, in the air. Um, some people don't realise about carbon monoxide. If you are getting headaches or you're feeling ill and it's just in the house that you're in, then just make sure that you're opening all of your windows, your doors, and you're, you're going to report it. If you do feel very, very ill, then you need to be seeking medical support. Really good advice. Always take uh, take the care to um, uh, to investigate first, rather than just ignore something like that. Uh, and I think that's uh, that's really good advice. So uh, I, I've got a couple more questions that are here. Okay. Um, what, what advice would you give to people who are worried um, uh, to in terms of uh, in, in terms of making that first step to get in touch? And, and how can you re reassure people? Well, there are a variety, as, as we've discussed, there's way, different ways that they can contact us. So they can either come in face to face or they can contact us via the telephone if they just wanted to make an initial um, an initial call to us. The service is free, we're independent, we're confidential, and we're impartial. So it's, it's just about making that call. If, if you've got people that are really, really worried, we, we hear it all the time. People say, I, was, I didn't want to contact you, I was scared to ring you, but I've come away and I feel a lot better about my situation now. Okay, thank you uh, for that. And. Um... What happens if we're at one stage sort of back in the process, those people that we hear about um, who are too scared to open their post because of debts? Um, if someone doesn't know how much debt they're in, uh, what would you advise and can you still help? We would advise them, obviously, to open their letters and see how much debt they are actually in because you don't know what you're facing until you've um, opened that up. I do understand that some people don't want to do that. Um, the advisors, the debt advice team would give you full advice and support around that. 
Also, I'll just have there. Sorry, Tracy. No, that's okay, Laura. Um, when I used to deal with clients over the phone with the debt issues, um, like you say, a lot of them don't know how much or how many debts or how many creditors, and that's fine. Um, the debt we gather as much information initially as we can, and then the debt advisors they have tools and things, and they can actually find debts that they may not know about them and find them for them to support them as well. So it doesn't matter if they haven't got all of the details when they first call. Thank you. That's really helpful and obviously reassuring because sometimes, you know, you put things out of your mind um, because it, it's something which is too difficult to worry about. And um, that's good advice. And obviously you advise people to try and deal with uh, with um, any any risk of bad debt as early as possible uh, yeah. and particularly work with those providers, whether they're utility companies or housing companies, um, if only just to, to make sure that uh, they can help support along the journey as well. Yeah, so they, I mean, they would be um, identifying what the priority debts were and obviously focusing on those. Thank you. A final one for me this afternoon. If I was to go to a drop in, uh, what can I expect? Um, and is the staff to talk uh, to about all sorts of issues, or, or would you be mainly starting as being referred into the service? So I hand that to you, Laura. Um, so at a drop in, initially, you'd probably make what we call a brief assessor. So the brief assessor would take all of the background, um, all of your situation, um, and then that you'd explain your problem and they would they could maybe signpost you to somewhere else, maybe that may support you in that area that you've come in for, or they might make a telephone appointment for you then or another full appointment. Um, because obviously the drop in the round about 20 minutes long. So they could book you a full appointment with an with an advisor face to face. Or they may be if it's something they could easily deal with, the brief assessors could give you the, the advice there and then that you needed. So the sort of three ways how they direct you. But also if you needed specialist advice, like yeah. so if you did need a debt advisor or specific energy advice or benefits advice. We've got people who deal with employment who can help them with that. And they would book you then to somebody who's got, you know, their their area of expertise in that. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. That's, uh, that's really helpful, uh, Tracy and, uh, and Laura. So um, I think that uh, draws this series of six webinars to a close. Um, so it, it, it leaves me to say, first of all, thank you to Citizens Advice, to, to Tracy and to Laura uh, for a really informative webinar this afternoon. Um, second of all, um, th this, is a, the, this is the last in the series of six. All six have been recorded, however. So please uh, do feel free to take the opportunity to watch back the recordings uh, uh, from our website. Um, and equally, please uh, share this resource with anyone else you think uh, would really benefit from that, whether that's uh, people uh, that you're talking to, to hopefully give them the confidence to, to reach out and talk to uh, the right bodies, or alternatively to, to other volunteers. Um, and um, at the outset of the uh, webinar, I mentioned if there are other areas that people feel they would benefit from uh, having a specialist uh, talk to them a bit about some of the, the um, ins and outs, then you know, please do drop us a line and we will endeavour to see if we can find the relevant specialist or even answer the questions. Maybe it doesn't require a webinar, maybe it just requires just an email response and we can help you out. Uh, with that that signposting, but obviously the best signposting service um, within the borough has been uh, citizens advice for a long standing period. Um, and finally, it just leaves me just to say thank you to the people who have organised these webinars, um, which is uh, Anna Nevin to uh, One Show uh, and to uh, Raven. Uh, so thank you for, for doing that. And I hope you found this uh, series very useful. And I think it just leaves me to sign off and say thank you very much. Thank you.